Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn in what is undoubtedly my most um, casual attire to date. Um, I think I don't think I've ever been hatted before, but if you've seen me in real life, you realize I actually do wear a baseball cap quite often. Um, this is what you get when you're scrambling around all day trying to open up a store. I've been running back and forth pretty grubby, but I wanted to get a show out for you guys. Um, I know I've said that I keep promising to, to do the show from the store. Don't worry, you're gonna get sick and tired of having me uh, do these shows from the store very soon. Uh, so enjoy this while you have it. Um, in the next couple episodes, I will be transitioning it over there, but right now there's just people banging hammers and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, it isn't really conducive, but uh, I'll give you a grand tour, a video grand tour of the store as soon as possible. So uh, before we get into too much more, I wanted to give a couple shout outs, haven't done this in a while. Uh, to people who have left five star reviews on iTunes, uh, thank you to everyone who leaves any sort of review, I always appreciate it. Um, if you just leave a rating, I don't know your name or else I would also give a shout out. I only can see the, the, the names of the people who actually leave reviews. Uh, so I write them down when I see them. I read every one, and uh, I like to say thank you. Uh, the uh, people, uh, and again, I'm guessing, uh, like Tony NYC or, no, wait, no, I said it wrong. Tony something. I screwed up his name last time, and he corrected me, and now I'm screwing it up again. Um, so, okay. So, Double E 17, 1979 OSA, and Dr. Strange Loving. Thank you guys very much for the kind words. Uh, very nice of you guys. I think we're up to 88 five star reviews out of a total of 91 reviews. Pretty good. Um, so, uh, what do I have today? I have two beers from New Zealand, from Moa. Pretty new to the scene here in the States. Uh, wonderful packaging, and I uh, oh, caught my eye almost immediately, as did some of the names of their beers. Uh, very kind of cool. Uh, I hear the dog rustling. Yeah, he's getting ready to do something, probably bark or annoy me somehow. Um, it's almost like a part-time job for him. Uh, I guess it would be his only job, so maybe it's a full-time job. Anyway, um, Moa, uh, New Zealand, uh, known more for their uh, wine, I think, internationally. But, you know, there are a lot of beers now coming out. We have Epic Brew, which is pretty big. Uh, I think the, are the Yeasty Boys out of there, too? I don't know. Um, and the, the hops, you know, um, Nelson Sauvin is a big popular uh, hop from New Zealand. There are others. I think Galaxy might be from Australia, but there's a bunch around there. So they, they have uh, the hop fields in the, oh boy, I should know the region, the New Zealand hop region. It starts with an N. Maybe it's Nelson. I forget. Um, anyway, uh, they grow hops there. <laughs> and they do wine, and now they do beer. And I'm going to go out and, and say, let me talk about the two beers that we have right here. We have the St. Joseph and the Imperial Stout aged in Pinot Noir barrels from Moa. As much as I love the packaging, the packaging is some of the best I've seen. Uh, they come in four packs uh, and they've got these like almost old style paintings of like bare knuckle boxers and stuff. They, they come in four pack boxes um, and they are cork and cage. Uh, and even individually, they look great. They've got a little, like, um, what is this? It's a, um, oh my goodness, emu. Uh, an emu, uh, I think, right here. And um, it just says Moa Brewing LTD. Um, but I have to say, when I went onto their site, I didn't like it. Uh, now he's... Uh, Max is, likes to sit up against the mic, so you might be hearing doggy stuff hitting the mic. Drives me nuts, this dog. <laughs> but I love him. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, so the marketing thing, a little too slick for me, a little too quirky, um, trying to be very cheeky, uh, reminded me of a kind of high-end, high-shelf, like vodka company. Uh, I think a lot of them are kind of full of it as well, and uh, I don't know. It, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. 
Now, I'm gonna say right, right from the get-go, I've never had these beers. I will judge them as is. Um, the owner of the brewery is from a wine background. He went to school for viticulture. He studied in um, uh, France, in Sancerre, as well as Napa, and worked for his father's winery for quite some time. Uh, I think Alan something wines uh, from uh, Marlboro, which is where I believe these guys are from as well. And uh, they also have a lot of money, I think, from a, a, a spirits company called 42 Below, which was bought out by Bacardi. And it's just very slick, very produced, um, always trying to show you how cool they are. And maybe it is cool, um, but I just, it, I don't know, it's, maybe it's just not the American craft beer way. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's a little like Bud Light Platinum. You know, anyway, uh, I have some examples of, of, of what I mean by that, but the, the site itself is actually really cool. So anyway, enough about that. Let's move on and actually taste the beer. You guys don't want to hear how, you know, you don't want to hear me trashing uh, a brewery that I've never had. That's not really cool. And it's really about how good the beer is. Um, you know, there's uh, certainly some beers out there with terrible labeling, terrible marketing, and their beer's great. And hey, more power to them. So why not have you know slick marketing and great beer? You know, there's no reason. So uh, the first one is the uh, Saint Joseph. This is their triple, uh, it, uh, Belgian style triple. It's an ale, um, uh, usually hot, pretty high in alcohol. I think it says another nine and a half percent. That's right up there. Uh, it says to rouse the set of. Oh my goodness. There's quite a lot of sediment in there. There's like a dark band in here of sediment. Um, it says to rouse the sediment. I typically won't, wouldn't do that, and wouldn't recommend that with a triple. You know, this isn't necessarily a half of bites in, but there we go. Um, so, I mean, someone's calling me. I'm going to turn off my phone. It might be Margaret saying I'm coming in. Uh, she's due home any moment. Okay, so triples, strong Belgian beer, very yeast driven beer. Uh, you're gonna get um, some alcohol in it, typically some alcohol notes when it does get up to nine and a half percent. Wonderful food beer, and you're gonna get a lot of kind of spicy, peppery, fruity notes from it um, at its best. Uh, this is certainly very uh, murky. Um, you know, I think uh, triples can be pretty clear. Uh, and they are also typically highly carbonated. So that looks, you know, pretty much in standing here. It's a little bit light, a little bit hazy. Hmm. I'm getting some like fruity apple notes on here, like green apple, uh, a little bit of Jolly Rancher. Does it say what kind of hops on there? Um, oh, they call this a super premium beer. See how I mean? Like, isn't that what you call vodkas? Um, D D D D D. Doesn't say what hops are in here. But it's got like a, a green apple. Um, I, that's probably from the yeast. But there is kind of an earthy hop character, which is. You know, okay. Uh, I'm getting some like unripened uh, banana, maybe some like plantain, something. <sighs> maybe a little bit of uh, like toasted biscuit as well. Not bad. A little bit of uh, bitterness on the back end, which is okay. Definitely kind of that green fruit going on here. I'm getting some strawberry now, as well as that apple. I am getting kind of that aspirin bitterness on the back end, but, but mild. Um, very light, um, pretty dry beer as well. Um, it, is not as highly carbonated as I originally thought. <laughs> and these character is a little bit more subdued. Um, 
you know, I like that it's dry. I think a lot of times when triples leave Belgium, they, they end up getting way more sweet than they need to be. Um, not a bad beer. Um, really, it, it, it isn't. Um, you know, I, I would like to see a little bit more of the um, kind of spice and, and pepper in there uh, to balance out some of this fruit. Uh, right now, it's really light on, on the malt and just kind of that green, uh, almost herbaceous mixed with fruit, unripened fruit, um, you know, strawberry, apple, uh, maybe a little bit of orange, something like that, um, you know, a green, a banana. It's good. It's not the most complex triple in the world. Uh, certainly doesn't hold up to some of the Belgians, but it is a nice beer. It's very drinkable, and I do think it would go well with some lighter foods. Uh, listen to what they say this beer should go with. Um, rare beef on smoked bacon with Cafe de Paris butter. I don't know what that is. Uh, pork knuckle and applesauce with sweet potato mash. So why not just call it mashed sweet potatoes? Um, antipasta platter. Um, yeah, sure. That would be fine. Um, rare beef with smoked bacon. Might be a bit much for this beer, but anyway. You know what I mean? It's almost like pretentious what they're saying. Rare beef on, wait, rare beef, pork knuckle and applesauce, yeah, whatever. Rare beef, and they're just saying rare beef on smoked bacon. Isn't most bacon smoked? Most of it anyway. Um, whatever, uh, I'll move on. So that was that, oh, what did I give it? Um, I'll give it an 87. It was a good beer. It wasn't a great beer. Um, you know, if I didn't have it again, I wouldn't lose any sleep about it. But if someone offered it to me, I'd have it. I think Margaret is coming home now. So, the next one. Yeah, Margaret's coming home because Max just knows. He sits by the door when, when it's coming. So, uh, I'll pause it for a moment while she enters, and then I'll start back up. Here she is. Uh, we're back. Margaret is uh, here, and the dog is happy, and we can move on. I took the time to also give myself a little rinse, and we're ready to move on to the next of the Moa beers. This is a beer that I am definitely interested in trying. This is their Imperial Stout aged in Pinot Noir barrels. Um, New Zealand Pinot Noir has somewhat of, an, uh, of a name for it. Um, I'll withhold my judgment on the New Zealand Pinots I have had. Love uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. Um, okay, so, whoa, hey now, that kind of shot right out. This beer, I believe, is even heftier. 10.2% uh, alcohol by volume, uh, bottle fermented and conditioned, and like I said, aged in Pinot Noir barrels. So, um, curious to see what that lends to the final beer. Mm, whatever. I'll just set that there. Okay, uh, quite a bit of foam, even more than the triple, which is surprising. Um, really nice, kind of thick uh, head of foam. Almost looks like uh, like a root beer float on top. Um, how when you drop the the ice cream into the root beer, you get those like really sudsy looking uh, foam in there. That's kind of what we've got going on here. Uh, quite the dark beer as well. I'm just barely getting any brown at the edge. Other than that, it's it's dark. Um, nice looking beer. Um, I'm getting kind of a, a mix of savory and mm, maybe like strawberry here. Um, maybe like a dried strawberry. <sighs> Notes of maybe baker's chocolate, um, a, a hint of roast, not an overpowering stouty flavor that you would expect to get a lot of coffee or a lot of chocolate um, or even a lot of the, the savory umami stuff. Um, pretty subtle. And definitely the fruit is on the forefront of, of the nose. I'm not getting a ton of barrel. 
maybe some like, I think maybe some of this ashy quality that I'm getting is from the barrel. It's interesting, it's almost got like a woody strawberry note. Whoa, okay. One thing I like a lot about this beer is how much it changes on your palate. I mean, there was definitely several specific kind of transitions in the beer, which I like. Um, in fact, let me have another sip and see if I can kind of talk through how the, the beer changes. Okay, sorry for the silence, I was thinking, trying to remember. I was hitting record. Um, so when you first drink the beer, the first thing you notice is that, again, it's fairly light, yet smooth. Um, it does have some creamy qualities to it. Um, <clears throat> and then you do get that ashy, kind of bitter um, flavor from the uh, roast, I would imagine. Um, uh, so it's it's kind of, oh, this is a nice smooth beer. There's some kind of ashy, woody notes to it here. A little bit of bitterness. Okay. Then you start getting, and this is still all in your mouth, and you start getting some of that fruit, some of that strawberry. You swallow it, and then you really get the acid in, in, in the beer as well. And I don't mean anything like, like tart. But there is some kind of, there's like an acid, acidic edge to it. Um, and then as it washes down, you get much more of that ash kind of coating your, your palate again. Um, kind of interesting and remarkable how, how the beer just continues to change in, when you have it in your mouth and then after you've actually drank it. Um, you know, I, I'm curious if this is his wine background, you know, how the, the beer finishes and have a has a beginning, middle, and end to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, well put together in that sense. Um, the one thing I don't like about it is none of those flavors really are doing it for me. Um, you know, I feel like the ashiness without that oomph of of the stout itself um you know it, it's got all these wonderful like secondary and tertiary components to the beer you know the acid is is would be really cool i think um the fruit could be awesome and and, and all these components but the base is missing. The heart of it isn't of this beer isn't quite there. Um, you know, maybe I'm being overly harsh uh, on these guys, but um, you know, I love kind of all these these subtleties that they've got going on there. I think they just need to work on the base recipe, beef this sucker up, and I mean, at ten and a half percent alcohol or ten point two percent alcohol, I just want some more. You know, I mean. I, <sighs> You should be able to do a lot with all that booze, right? I mean, all that malt in there. Um, yeah, I, I just want a bigger, badder beer, especially a beer that comes in a corking cage and you know, you're know you taking the time to, to put it in the Pinot. And I think the Pinot does kind of come through in there, the kind of the fruity acid. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, I, I would probably... See, this is a tough one. I don't like the base beer, but I think it's kind of a cool beer. So what do you do with that, you know? I'll go 87 with it again. Um, you know what? I'll go 88 only because between the two, I felt like this is more unique and interesting, if not delicious. Where this is, tastes fine, not exceptionally unique or interesting if that makes sense. Um, and you know, give me unique and interesting any day. Obviously, if it tastes like garbage, I don't want that. But um, but yeah, so there you have it. In fact, that's the beer I'm gonna finish with of these two. Um, uh, solid showing from, from Moa. Uh, I'll, I'll put up the pricing there. I'm not sure off the top of my head what it is, and then you can decide if based on what I said, if you're interested in it for the price point. Um, but as always, guys, thank you so much. Like I said, I will be doing these shows very soon from the store. I promise you, thank you for all the well wishes that I've been getting. Um, and again, sorry for, sorry for all this. Um, but, uh, you know, just, uh, 
you know, can't can't have my ascot getting you know dirtied or soiled when I'm uh, moving around in the store. Um, but uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, as always, thanks so much. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter and the site CraftPeerTemple.com, and I'm sure I'm other places too, YouTube and Vimeo and all sorts of places. Um, that's about it, guys. Um, until next time, I've got some New Zealand beers to drink, and hopefully you do too.